Good morning. morning. Y'all wave. Everybody wave. <laughs> Good to see you. Glad that you're here today. This is a special uh, Sunday in the life of St. John, United Methodist Church. We're going to have the blessing of the animals as a part of our service today. We recognize that we had some rain this morning and we may have, uh, have a few folks not able to be here. We're glad that our... Uh, we're able to live stream this service. Of course, we'll be continuing to live stream all of our services. Uh, even when we get back in the sanctuary, hopefully in doing that. I did want to say that next Sunday is All Saints Sunday. We honor and uh, all those who've gone on to be with the Lord uh, this past year. If you have a loved one, we will honor them as well. Uh, but this will be a service uh, that's held here at the lake. Again, next Sunday is unique in that our service will be at 11 o'clock instead of the 10 o'clock hour, but we also fall back. So I think the way we calculate that, you get two extra hours to sleep in next Sunday. So, But we will be here at 11 o'clock to worship, and we will again honor the saints that have gone on to be with God. So hope that you'll be here or be a part of that service. We're so glad that you're here. If you want more information about St. John Church, you can go to our website or to our Facebook page, St. John UMC Augusta. It's also on the back of your program, and you can get that also, I believe, online. We're so glad that you're, you're here to be with us now. Let's begin the service of worship in prayer. Let us pray. Oh God, we are mindful of all the many blessings that you give to us. We are thankful for the rain that comes to water the earth, that causes the plants to grow so that we might breathe. We ask, O oh God, that you would bless this time to be together. For it's in the name of Christ we pray. We calculate that and you get two extra hours to sleep on online. That's kind of cool. I don't know what just happened. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. Okay. Technology is, uh, is my business. It's my game. Amen. I think, did I say amen? <laughs> We'll begin with the greeting. The animals of God's creation inhabit the skies, the earth, and the sea. They share in the fortunes of human existence and have a part in human life. God, who confers gifts on all living things, has often used the service of animals or made them reminders of the gifts of salvation. Animals were saved from the flood and afterwards made a part of the covenant with Noah. The Paschal Lamb recalls the Passover sacrifice and the deliverance from slavery in Egypt. A giant fish saved Jonah. Ravens brought bread to Elijah. Animals were included in the repentance of Nineveh, and animals share in Christ's redemption of all God's creation. We therefore invoke God's blessings on these animals. As we do so, let us praise the Creator and thank God for setting us as stewards over all the creatures of the earth. God created us and placed us on the earth to be stewards of all living things. Therefore, let us proclaim the glory of our Creator, saying, O oh God, how wonderful are the works of your hands. Blessed are you, O Lord of the universe. You create the animals and give us the ability to train them to help us in our work. O oh God, how wonderful are the works of your hands. Blessed are you, O Lord of the universe. You give food from animals to replenish our energies. O oh God, how wonderful are the works of your hands. Blessed are you, O Lord of the universe, for the sake of our comfort. You give us domestic animals as companions. O oh God, how wonderful are the works of your hands. Blessed are you, O Lord of the universe, you care for us, even as you care for the birds of the air. O oh God, how wonderful are the works of your hands. Blessed are you, O Lord of the universe, you offered your Son to us as the Passover lamb, and in him willed that we should be called your children. O oh God, how wonderful are the works of your hands. 
Now, this time we're going to sing a hymn, and we're, I'll go around and bless the animals and my particularly loud dog that is here on the shore. Please keep it down, Penny. Um, but we also have some animals that are online with us. And so if you are tuning in online, I invite you to share um, a picture of your dog or cat or bird or ferret or whatever. <laughs> and so we can all see your pictures of your animals from home. And I will pray a blessing over your particular animals um, that are joining us online. And I'll go around during the hymn for the in-person animals. So for all of you online animals tuning in from home, oh Lord, we pray your blessing on these special, precious animals, your creation. We pray that you fill us with joy and thanksgiving as we tend to these animals and care for them and as they bring us joy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. about doing animal sounds children but I thought that might scare the dogs especially Penny but we have the Dixons and the Solomons here and the Thomases hey Thomases <laughs> and all of you kids joining us online hopefully I will not crinkle my coat's already on it's a little warm in this coat but I'm wearing it as a reminder that we did this warm clothing drive and we're still doing it because our church likes to help people in the community. Our church likes to gather and um, do things that were, are going to make other people's lives easier and bring people joy and let them know that they are loved. When we do things like put on a coat, we are surrounded and we feel safe and cozy and comfy and reminds me a lot take this off right because it's making too much noise but you get the picture it reminds us of God's love we are completely surrounded by God's love and God makes us feel cozy and safe and is in our head 
and is in our arms and is in our hearts and is all around us. Our scripture today talks about how we should love the Lord our God with all of us. So just like we're, we can be wrapped up in that warm coat, we can love God with all of who we are, with our hearts, with our soul, all of who we are, and our minds by thinking about God and all the things we do. And so, and Jesus also says to love your neighbor as yourself. And that's exactly what we do when we do things like have a little warm clothing drive, is we're loving our neighbor as ourselves. And so, I see one jacket with a kid. It's Robbie wearing a jacket, and oh, Evelyn looks kind of cozy in her hoodie. So the weather is getting a little bit... This one? No, that's not better. This hold it still. Good? Okay. The weather is getting a little bit colder, and so we're going to be wearing jackets a lot more. So every time you put your jacket on, Remember that you are loved and that we love God with all of who we are. Let's pray together a repeat after me prayer. Dear God, Dear God thank you for my church. Thank you for my church. Thank you for my family. Thank you for my family. Thank you for wrapping us up in your love. Thank you for wrapping us up in your love. Help us to love our neighbors. Help us to love our neighbors. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lindsay. We're going to continue in worship and go to God in prayer as we offer up a, an offering uh, for God. Again, everything that we have is a gift from God, and we want to give thanks to God for the blessings that God's given to us. Let us pray. Oh, Lord, we do thank you again for all that you've given to us. We ask that as we live our lives, we would respond to your grace in appropriate ways by giving of ourselves, all of ourselves, our time, our talents, our financial resources, that you would use us as we seek to share your love with all the world, help us to be givers as you have been so freely a giver to us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. This is my Father's work. And to my listening ears All nature sings And round me rings The music of the spheres This is my father's home I rest me in the fall Of rocks and trees Of skies and seas His hand the this is my father's work, of birds that carols raise, a morning light, the lily white, declares their maker's praise. This is my Father's world. He shines in all that's fair. In the rustling grass, I hear him pass. He speaks to me everywhere. This is my Father's world. Oh, let me ne'er forget That though the wrong seems all so strong God is the ruler yet This is my Father's world The battle is not done Jesus who died shall be satisfied and earth and heaven be one. This is my Father's world. The battle is not done. Jesus who died shall be satisfied. And earth and heaven be one. Jesus who died shall be satisfied. 
and earth and heaven be one. Father's World, what a great song and what a great prayer for us today to remember. I would invite you to turn in your Bibles if you have those with you there, and I'm going to be reading the scripture from Matthew, the 22nd chapter, uh, starting at verse 34 and following through verse 46. It's Matthew 22, starting at verse 34 and following through 46. Hear now the word of the Lord. Hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, the, fat, the Pharisees got together. One of them, an expert in the law, tested Jesus with this question. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and the greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbors as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. While the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them, What do you think about the Messiah? Whose son is he? The son of David, they replied. He said to them, How is it then that David, speaking by the Spirit, calls him Lord? For he says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If then David calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one could say a word in reply, and from that day on no one dared to ask Jesus any more questions. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty God, again, we hear familiar words and we continue to struggle with their meaning. Help us to hear, help us to be obedient to the call that they place upon our lives. For it's in the name of Christ we pray. Amen. I don't know if y'all can see this or not. I hope you can. I'll try to describe it to you. I got a uh, a Valentine card one day, Valentine's card, and it was two uh, Tyrannosaurus Rexes. Now you know Tyrannosaurus Rexes had little short little arms, right? And these two Tyrannosaurus Rexes were looking at each other, and one of them had their little arms out, and they were going, I love you this much. And the other Tyrannosaurus Rex said, well, that's not very much. <laughs> I don't know. I get weird cards, right? I got an odd family. Um, <laughs> I, I remember, too, a, a, sent a statement, and I've, I've shared this with you before. One of my great favorite movies, a, a great theologian who, Forrest Gump, said, I'm not a smart man, but I know what love is. You know, I think every once in a while we need to revisit what love is. Do we really know what love is? Do we? Do we really? There was a quote that I stumbled across recently, C.S. Lewis, he was talking about uh, really technology, he, and he, he, he used this phrase called chronological snobbery, and that is the notion that just because current technology is more advanced than it was 40 years ago doesn't mean that the human race is any more intelligent. And I was thinking about that in light of our idea about love. Just because we hear about love all the time or hear that, those words in a song, do we really know what love is? I think it's worth revisiting. Now Jesus, we know, was asked some trick questions and for whatever reason, people were trying to uh, catch him and trap him and, and uh, out of their own malice. But this seems to be like a, a legitimate question when an expert in the law says, who uh, or what is the greatest commandment? And Jesus replies. And actually, he's quoting from two of the most famous traditional summaries from the law. One is from chapter 6 in Deuteronomy and also chapter 19 in Leviticus. And he's reciting the text 
that most every Jew would recite every morning and every evening. So that brings Jesus in alignment with the Torah, and it also brings him in alignment with those who are asking the question. Again, I do think that we know in our heads what love is, but we may not know always in our heart what love is. Do we know what love is? Jesus' answer is at the core of the Jewish faith. And it seems odd to me, if you go back and look at the scripture, that you go from this immediate passage to Jesus kind of challenging the Pharisees. It goes straight from, you must love one another as I have loved you, and then he says, kind of switches gears, right, forty from 40 to like 41, right in there, there's a whole, and Jesus starts talking about the Messiah, and he says, who do you say the Messiah is? Is he the son of David? And they say, yes. And then he kind of throws this at him. Now, I have wondered about this because I've been looking at this for a while now, but what my thought is, is that possibly we don't have the rest of the conversation. When somebody went to write this down 70 years later after they remember this time Jesus was speaking, they remember the, high, the top spots, but maybe they forgot some of the middle part of this uh, dialogue. And so maybe that's the reason, but it just goes immediately from uh, the, the commandments to, the, um, to this idea about what the Messiah or who the Messiah is. So the most common title for the Messiah is the son of David. And I've wondered if for whatever reason, Jesus is again challenging those that ask questions uh, to challenge them that they don't really understand the scriptures as well as they think they do. Maybe he's trying to get them to expand their understanding of the Messiah. Jesus is quoting from Psalm 110 when he says, The Lord says to my Lord, sit at my right hand. And he asks them, how could David call his own son Lord? So potentially what Jesus is trying to get them to see is that the son of David title was not an adequate or full title for the Messiah. And maybe, again, he's trying to get them to stop asking all these questions. Jesus, we know, had to clarify with the disciples what it meant to be the Messiah. He had to clarify to those that were there who the Messiah was. You know, we've been really struggling and I could even say arguing about who Jesus is, we could say we've been arguing Christianity from the very beginning. We, early on, we had the Roman Catholic Church and the Eastern Orthodox Church. Then years later, we had the, the Protestants and the Catholics and they split. And then the, the Lutherans and the Anglicans and they split. And then the, the Wesleyans and, and the, uh, who did they, uh, the Calvinists, they, they all had their arguments. And, and I even heard of a church in North Georgia, and I don't know if this is true or not. It was called the Left Foot Baptist Church. And I speculate that around the mountain, there's another church called the Right Foot Baptist Church. Evidently, you're supposed to write, wash the left foot first before washing the right foot. I don't know if that's true or not, but I read that once. We have always found things to disagree with. But maybe it's time we get to the core of what our Christian faith is, to love God and to love one another. We have been guilty of complicating the faith by getting stuck in the regulations sim similar to what the Pharisees would get stuck in. They got stuck in the weeds, as we say. When are we going to learn to keep the main thing, the main thing. We would all be much better off if we could focus on this summary of Jesus, to love God and to love people, to really love God and to really love people, not just in empty words, but in reality. Jesus is moving us to deepen our understanding of love, but also deepen our understanding of who the Messiah is, of who Jesus is. You know, love in our world has become kind of a vague notion of, of hearts and flowers. 
And so Jesus helps us to see what love is. Jesus tells us to turn the other cheek, to love our enemies, to give a cup of cold water, to give up a coat for a stranger. Jesus taught us what love is by how he lived. I don't know if I've mentioned this to you, but I have two of the most intelligent, brightest, and beautiful granddaughters that anyone has ever seen in the universe. And uh, I know they're really in intelligent. One of the things is one of them has learned to say, and she's not even, she's probably 20 months old, she can say, I love you. Well, it kind of sounds like that. It sounds like she's got marbles in her mouth when she says it. I love you. Her mother, my daughter, will say, say, I love you. She'll say, I, I love you. <laughs> it's kind of funny. And I've thought about that. Does my granddaughter really understand those words? No, certainly she doesn't. And yet, she's learning what those words mean. For every time she says those words when I'm around her, she gets a great big hug from her grandfather. Maybe I'm learning, too, what love is. Jesus reveals love not just through words, but through self-sacrificing action. And maybe again, he is connecting this idea of love to the Messiah. In other words, if we really want to know what love is, we've got to look to Jesus. If we really want to know what love is, we've got to see Jesus who defined love by his life and by his death. You know, there are a thousand songs out there about love and some of them are good a lot of them are not so good i remember just one that came to mind love is but a song we sing no it's not it's much more than that there's an old country song that talks about defining love and it says love is by defining basically what love is not it says love is not a place you fall into Love is not uh, something that you find. Love is not something that you have. It's not something that we are in. It's not even the words we say. But love is, hear this, something that we do. I believe this songwriter's got it right. Love is an action. Love is a verb. Love is not empty words. Love is not just some platitudes. Love is not just these, uh, this gushy feeling that we have. No, love takes action. Love means to listen to those that are hurting. Love means to put a, co a coat on someone who is cold. Now, I don't think love is automatic. I don't think it's just common sense. In the world, and even in the church, love can sometimes sound sentimental and almost trite. Real love, you see, is difficult. Real love, you see, is painful. Real love is hard to do. Real love is demanding. Love, you see, is difficult, and we have to learn what it means. And I think we have to revisit it every once in a while. But I do think we can know what love is, as Forrest Gump says. In order to do so, we need to look more closely to Jesus. Live more closely like Jesus. Jesus showed us that real love is giving all that he, he had, even his very life. And he communicated his love not by standing on the temple steps and having a theological argument, but by willingly stretching out his arms on a cross and saying, I love you this much. This is God's word for you today. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for your example of love. We recognize that you were not just about platitudes, but that you were about real love and that you lived it and that you died it. Help us as we go about our lives this week to be mindful of what real love means for us. Help us, we pray. We pray this prayer in the name of him who taught us to pray, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. 
And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We're going to be singing the closing hymn. I think there's uh, some printed there. And I think also we've got some folks that are going to join the church at the close of this hymn. I'll have, have them stand up and we'll invite off of the vows of the church. Let's uh, stand for those that would like to stand. Let's sing In the Cross, In the Cross. to join the church today. Raise your hand back there so folks can see you. I know that after the service, folks will want to say hey, hey to you and speak to you. I want to offer you this question. Will you be faithful to St. John Church and support it with your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? And you say, we will. God bless you. We welcome you and extend the, the right hand of Christian fellowship and friendship to you. Look forward to getting to know you better. God bless you. You know, it is, as Christian people, it is our, our call to continue that vow to support the church and to support the work of Christ with our prayers and with our presence and with our gifts and with our service and with our witness. And we ask that we would 
Each of us, again, recommit ourselves to that call as well. Now, receive this benediction. May you experience the peace and the presence of Jesus Christ in your life today that you might have the courage to love one another. Go in peace. Amen. Thank you.